we're thrilled that you've agreed to chair the school board, which is the governance group for the school. And I'm particularly pleased that you're going to be my boss. So we're adopting a new kind of brand positioning. World Challenges Oxford Answers. What do you see the world needs in terms of some of the answers that uh, will help move things forward? Well, first of all, we need to realize that we are first and foremost citizens of planet Earth. Once we realize that we're all citizens of planet Earth and have some of these major challenges, we then also need to realize that we are responsible for finding the solutions. So that creates the collective uh, energy. I think what the Side Business School can do in this is to bring the uh, rigor to that, to bring the thinking to that, to challenge some of the boundaries in which we operate, uh, next to obviously an enormous cadre of intellectual know-how that we need. You need to work in partnership. It is incredibly difficult to do these things alone. And uh, how do we work with governments and how do we work with uh, civil society is, is not that easy. So systemic thinking is one thing and figuring it out, but then actually implementing it requires different skill sets. And we need to have more people that are trained to do that. So the SDGs are a set of 17 goals. And as you've said in other venues, they're all interconnected. But some have said that there are some that need to be addressed more forcefully, more quickly. Uh, what's your take on that and, and which ones would you have the world prioritize and maybe more narrowly us prioritize? Well, obviously they are all interrelated, like you cannot do goal number four of education if you don't take goal number two of food security. Uh, people go to school hungry, there's not much education either. Uh, you cannot get women in school if you don't do goal number six, which is sanitation and have toilets there, for example. So lots of these things are interrelated. But the most burning issues right now, if you want to be tough on yourselves and would have to make choices, it's climate change and inequality. We are at this crucial moment in the history of mankind where we're actually pushing people back into poverty. And we see that happening and that's not a good place to be. So the income inequality and, and opportunities need to be addressed. And then at the same time, climate change, because as Greta Thornburg rightfully says, uh, it doesn't make any sense to go to school if we are creating a world that we cannot live in 30 years from now. And, and we are at that tipping point that that sense of urgency needs to be understood. You got back from UNGA week just recently. Come back with a sense of optimism, a sense that the agenda is on track. Well, the reality is on the hard numbers, the agenda is way off track. If you look at the two uh, pertinent issues that we have, climate change and inequality, we have some work to do. Likewise, on the sustainable development goals, we're on a trajectory right now to reach for most of the goals at maximum half the targets of what we've set out, and that's obviously not good enough. These problems are so large, they're going to require collaboration across sectors, for sure. uh, between government and business and civil society. So how do we forge a spirit of collaboration and cooperation to address these goals? Or will we continue to fight about all the issues that we're fighting about now and somehow miss the opportunity to save the world for our, our future generations? There is no doubt that the level of challenge that we are facing right now requires uh, cooperation amongst all stakeholders including the academic environment. I believe the driving force will have to come from business, but with a certain measure in how we do it, and that is fully embracing civil society and governments, uh, first to get the legitimacy, and secondly, to put the right frameworks and policies in place to drive these lasting changes. So it's not the direction anymore that we have to worry about or what needs to be done, it's the speed and scale of implementation that we need to focus on. Now. You mentioned the BRT statement, the Business Roundtable statement, which in August came out with a unanimous opinion of 180 US CEOs that they have to worry about stakeholders in the planet. Do you think that this is mere words or do you think it's going to be followed up with action? And if so, what should businesses do? Yeah, I'm on the positive side. Uh, of course, it's a statement right now. It doesn't require companies to do anything behind this. But the fact that that statement has been made publicly, and in the US, by the way, putting the shareholders at par with the other stakeholders, if you look at that statement, is a big step forward. It's a great movement to get some of these companies that are not yet included in the climate commitments to make some firm commitments. Many of the CEOs have now made clear that they're going to run a multi-stakeholder model. So the world will be watching, but just like watching, we should not be the judges. We should actively work with these companies to move towards these more responsible models.
We now have data that a more diverse organization, which is goal number five of gender equality, for example, is obviously uh, an organization that is doing better. We have now evidence that organizations that internalize the challenges of climate change seem to be better run, which is goal number 13. So wherever you look from whatever angle to the sustainable development goals, I think people are starting to see the opportunities. It sounds like as the world challenges and Oxford answers, the first thing is simply to answer the call. And uh, you're certainly helping us to do that. Thank you, Paul. I look forward to it. Thanks, Peter.